Hello everyone, am I audible to you all? Good evening. So it's been a long time we have met before the UPSC prelims, right? Yes. Good evening, everyone. So we have been seeing series of classes, series of sessions in the anthropology. We have understood anthropology, what we'll be seeing in the class, and then how we should start preparation, everything we have started already. So today we are going to see one of the important topic, evolution and emergence of man. So we'll be seeing the basics of evolution. Before Darwin, how was, uh, what were theories, what were the understanding about evolution? And then we will talk about Darwinism. And then we'll go to some of the post-Darwin theories. After Darwin, what were all the theories related to evolution with examples? Fine. So questions come from these part very importantly. Again, I'll tell you, in terms of optionals, it needs more depth compared to the other subjects in GS. So in GS, one paper will cover three subjects or something, but optionals, you have the same subject which is having two papers. So you need a very uh, depth understanding of this, number one. Number two, some of you might have given your attempts in the prelims. Some might have planned to give your attempt next year. Whatever it is, you have to start preparing the mains examining now okay this is the right time so the exam is in june prelims is in june so what you have to do is you should start preparing for the mains parallelly with the optionals and optional preparation also how should it go is like you have to listen to the classes and you should have started writing practice fine even in the telegram uh, channel we have started i have started the test batch i mean test batch in the sense daily answer writing two questions we are writing two questions and we will be correcting it. Peer correction takes place. So the main important key for the mains examination is writing practice. It's not just studying. It's not just understanding. It is a writing practice in optionals also. You should have started writing two questions per day minimum. You should be writing already. Fine. So this is how you should be preparing for the optionals. So today we are seeing evolution concepts one of the very interesting concepts no till now we have seen many concepts which are which were all very interesting this way evolution also will be very interesting and we can understand many things we'll be seeing many uh, uh, terminologies very interesting examples everything we'll be seeing today okay so for this i would like to welcome you all to upsc cac optional channel and i would like to thank an academy for this option because they are india's largest learning platform and they are giving us so many opportunities like daily live classes, structured courses, live test and quizzes, unlimited access, all these things. And about me, many of you have attended my class already. Many of you know about me already. I'm just introducing myself. I am Subha Kirtana. I'm an engineer basically. I have four years of teaching experience for civil services and TNPSC. And I have mentored more than 1,000 students. It was 100 initially. Now it has become more than 1,000 after coming to an academy platform. And I'm an anthropology faculty and I have a teaching experience in terms of NEET also. So this is my Telegram channels link. So I want every one of you to join this Telegram channel. It's an open channel. And this is my profile link in the Unacademy platform. So here you can go and watch my special classes. I am designing the special classes. From tomorrow we'll be having a special classes with mains perspective. So how to approach mains? Many of you have, uh, you know, have prepared for May, prelims for a long time, but Many don't know the idea, proper idea about how to prepare for the mains. So what I'm going to do is I will start the special classes related to mains. So every subject, how you should cover, how you should start preparing. Okay, it's, it's very vast. Clear? So in UPSC, I will tell you something. We do have list of words, but we don't have a proper defined syllabus. If you all think that we have a defined syllabus, I will tell you, don't think that we have a proper defined syllabus. Everything are interconnected. Everything are interlinked. So we will see how to prepare it, where to take sources. Everything we'll be discussing in our special classes. Fine? Yes. So we have opportunity to interact with 100 plus top educators and the syllabus are comprehensive. Again, coming to this iconic and plus, again, I'm telling you, if you are preparing for the next UPSC preliminary examination, Please do go for iconic. You have a main sensor writing. What I'm telling 
what I am telling you to do is here available for you. Fine. So you have the mains question answer session daily, personalized feedback, everything along with in class support out of the class support is also available. So do go for iconic. You can use my code. You get a 10 percentage of discount along with that. You also have a no cost EMI. So you can do a monthly installment payment. So you don't feel that, you know, the fees uh, you can pay it in the installment in a smaller amounts. So it is available for 12 months and 24 months. And this is a special class details. So we are going to discuss with the mains again. So coming to this evolution. So what is evolution uh, we people have seen is that. So we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, life form has originated on the earth. So life form has originated on the earth and it has been changing. It, it, has, it has undergone some changes from the time from time to time. There were many various reasons. Initially, they did not even accept that there was changes and then they started giving religious reasons for that. Then came the scientific reasons. When scientific reasons came, there was a clash between religious reasons and the scientific reasons. And then we all know, whenever we talk about evolution, we know Darwin. But before Darwin, we have pre-Darwinian theories. We should study about that also. Pre-Darwinian, Darwin after Darwin. So we should be studying all these things. So when you are studying evolutionary theories or generally any theories, you should know about three things importantly. First of all, whose theory is that? Okay, first of all, whose theory is that? And you should know about that person. So this theory or any theory about that person. And then you have to know about the count of those theories. What do they say in that theory? And what are all the backups they use? What are all the proofs they use? And then finally, the third is criticism. This is the basic for any theory you study. It can be in anthropology or in gen GS or anywhere if you study any theory. First, you should know who is giving that theory. And then what is the main content of that theory? What are the uh, uh, support they are giving for their own theory? The proofs they are giving for their own theory and the criticisms. That is all we are all going to see here also. So pre-Darwinian theory is like we are starting it from the early scientific accounts of origin. Over past 2000 years, the creationist, okay, they did not, uh, they uh, did not exist alone within the Western tradition. Religious accounts for past 2000 years, you know, we know very well that God has created everything. Creationist theory, God has created everything, all these, these concepts, fine. Science began with Greeks in 600 BC. And then what happened then started the first scientific explanation for natural phenomena. Many Greeks, you know, many Greeks retained religious theories also about nature, uh, like mythical stories. You no, know, even in every religion, you have one story about how God created universe. Okay. In any religion. So if it is in uh, Hinduism, if it is Christianity, Islamism, in every religion, you have a mythical story, uh, uh, you know, uh, a kind of... Uh, a myth or uh, epic related to how God created this universe, how God created everything, fine. Then came this materialistic point of view, fine. So what is this? This materialism explained natural phenomena without the recourse to God or supernatural. This materialism, they are talking about the creation but without the God, okay. So what they are saying is the natural phenomena can be the result of physical matter moving in accord with natural law. They are talking about physics. Fine. So first is they are talking about matter, matter or material. So initially they are talking about God and then they are talking about the physics or the physical matter. But here what happened, we are talking about laws of motion of all the things. But how can these things explain the living organism? So the problem in materialistic form of theory is that this were not able to explain the living organisms. Okay. So again they are going back to God. Okay, all these concepts, all these confusions are remaining. And then biological origins possessed a particular puzzle for Greeks. Greeks, Greeks couldn't understand how biology started all these things. See, this pre-Darwinian theories are like you have to know what is Christmas, what is materialistic, all these things. And then when we talk about Lamarckianism, then this is like even more intense and important. Fine. Next. Then early natural uh, philosophers like Anaximander. We call him as atomist. Okay, he is he is proposing a crude theories of evolution. That is, they are not very detailed. You know, they have some sort of spontaneous generation of life. Like suddenly somewhere life generated, somehow species evolved. He is like giving a vague idea of life generated, then species evolved, that kind of thing. 
but they did not work out very well because you know they did not have a backup or proof or something okay so he, that is one important example then aristotle critic these ideas we know very well aristotle himself was an atheist so what happened the first and foremost biologist he was very avid observer of life particularly of fishes okay so particularly about fishes based on his close study aristotle is defining species as a breeding group very important concept whenever there is an important place where you have to define species you can use this because species is a breeding group species can interbreed among themselves what is the definition of species a species is a population which can interbreed among themselves who produce a fertile offspring do you understand so two important concept when it comes to species they can interbreed among themselves and produce fertile offspring fine so in any exam in mains today you have you should all keep one thing in mind when you are writing a definition ensure that you are backing that definition with a very famous person who is a expert in that particular field or a you know international organizations uh, release or something like that don't make up your own definition even though it is perfect these kind of datas like aristotle's definition these kind of datas will give you even more value in your answers clear yes next rejecting both creation and evolution aristotle simply seeing that species are eternal okay they always existed like there is no they no one no one has created it or they have evolved according to aristotle species are eternal they have been always there okay later christian philosophers try to integrate genesis with aristotle they typically viewed each species as created by god we already saw about creationist so creationist or christian philosopher they are saying that god only created that but according to uh, aristotle he is an atheist actually so according to him he is saying that you know uh, species have been already their living organism has already been there but then using aristotelian authority asserted that species remained fixed all time albeit fallen creation next deist and atheist accounts so this here this uh, uh, this side we are seeing people who believe in god this uh, the other side we are seeing people who do not believe in god so the breakdown of religious authority finally occurred during the enlightenment in the 1700s that is no sign of evolution started coming inside again okay now everybody is thinking that you know evolution has taken place something has been changing from time to time so what is Am I audible to you all now? Am I audible to you all now? Yes. Am I audible? Shall I continue? Yes. Fine. Okay. Fine. Is it clear, guys? Is it clear? If if it is clear, please do drop me a message. If it is clear, everything is clear. Please drop a message so that I can continue. I want a confirmation message from you. Yes. It's clear. Cool. Fine. So what happened? They propose. You no, know, atheists. They are proposing that solar system was not created by God, but a comet once hit the sun and knocked off a bunch of matter. So this each piece 
started becoming you know different planets and they also propose the origin of species okay so what happened first is this dennis dt dot so for example he is a committed materialist he proposed that all living forms developed by random chance mutations from spontaneously generated organisms so this names are very important so dennis what he is saying is that all living organism he is not giving i know a proper theory how he is saying that randomly species formed random mutations occurred and different organism generated and then astronomer laplace he is proposing a purely materialistic explanation for the origin of solar system okay so he is saying that it was once a big rotating gas nebula and then uh, as it rotated centrifugal and centripetal uh, forces pulled in the matter to the center which became the sun and then he is saying that then planets were created all these concepts fine so when laplace described this theory to napoleon he was asked napoleon is asking how does god fit into it okay so we just saw the astronomer laplace he is explaining that it was initially a nebula and they were rotating and during the rotation the centripetal and centrifugal force pushed the matter to the center okay so that is how then what happened it all got collapsed and it left little blobs of material that formed into different planets this was called as nebular hypothesis fine nebular hypothesis theory laplace so when laplace described the theory to napoleon he was asked a question how does god fit into it laplace famously responded i have no need for god in my hypothesis okay do you understand so it was a very interesting example that the in this hypothesis i did not have need of god to fit into this okay next next is coming abraham tremblay so he predicted that polyps which are very simple sea creatures could regenerate okay we know very well that many organisms can regenerate like when uh, even earthworms if you are cutting it they can regenerate into two different organisms or if a part of a, an, an animal if part of a polyp has been cut it can regenerate that own uh, uh, regenerate a new organ of that particular species by cutting them into pieces they regenerated the whole they could be flipped inside out and still operate people saw this as almost spontaneous generation okay philosophers took this as scientific evidence for their speculations next the empirical research during this period cut the other way that is what happened was that many people went to experimental and observational work in the nature and the generation after enlightenment reacted against the speculative nature of evolutionary ideas so how scientists developed explanations for evolution origin of life so initially they wanted to know how origin how life originated living organisms on earth today the chemicals which you know we know very well that there are chemicals which are keeping us work you know oxygen carbon dioxide water and then we have uh, you know sodium potassium so much chemicals are making us work but they are extremely complex we can't just you know uh, segregate them into simple chemicals so much chemicals are there in our body which is making us work which is extremely con uh, complex even in single celled microorganism they are very much complex in nature some people are finding it hard to accept that such complexity could have evolved through natural selection okay we will talk about natural selection very important concept because one of the important theory of darwin okay we will talk about natural selection what are the types of selection that take place and we will also talk about the examples for those okay some religious people you know see actually we will be seeing in religion also uh, two important things in religion two types of two type of things takes place what is that number 1 when you don't know the answer about something so you don't know the answer so someone is asking you a question you don't know the answer it was very easy to go to religion it was very easy to point out the religion the other type is that there are few people who still follow religion because of fear what will happen if i question it what will happen if i don't know it so in religion number 1 is like we don't know the answer we straight away point it to religion and fear we point out to religion there is the third most important thing why people go for religion is that in religion we will be studying it in even more detail the feeling that someone is there okay someone is there who will help us in some sense even though we are not certain about 
who is there when we will get help what kind of help we will get but there is a feeling that someone is there and someone is going to help us at some point of time in life that belief that faith that is what is religion okay the same way in many scientific theories many scientific postulates the first one to oppose it was religion because this answer which has been pointing out to religion were all questioned again by the scientific theories one such thing is here you know some religious people could not accept that it is the chemicals or it is nature or whatever it is according to them it is made by god or that life was behind by god and then evolved through natural selection so some people are saying that naturally due to some reason origin of species origin of life evolved and then it got evolution but the religious people are saying god created it and then let's talk about natural selection okay so atheist and theist so these three people's ideology is that next lamarck darwin where uh, lamarck darwin who is this lamarck darwin was not the only person to develop a theory of evolution actually what happened theory of evolution was spoken even before darwin but darwin's theory got very famous so we only know darwin but before darwin itself many people spoke about evolution one important person is lamarck he was a french scientist who developed an alternative theory at the beginning of 19th century let's see what is his theory there are two ideas number one law of inheritance of acquired characteristics what is acquired characteristics so in a species life in during during its life it is acquiring some characteristics that characteristics will inherit that is the first law okay second his theory stated that a characteristics which is used more and more by an organism becomes bigger and stronger okay what he is saying is that there is an organism let's take he is using giraffe here okay so according to him what he is saying is that the giraffe had to feed on trees okay so what happened it started jumping and wanted to have those leaves so when it started using its neck for very long time it became bigger and stronger that is that is what is his ideology and one that is not used eventually disappears so there is organ 1 which we are using often there is organ 2 which we are not at all using so if organ 1 you are using it often it will become stronger and bigger the organ 2 we are not using it will disappear in meantime that is what is ideology so two theories two uh, ideologies first is inheritance of acquired characters second one is use uh, theory of usage that is when you start using something more and more that will become bigger and stronger and when you are not using something that will disappear that is what is his theory okay very important theory this will come as a question lamarckianism itself can be coming as a question okay yes lamarck theory cannot account for all observation i'll i'll just ask you one example in our life so some human beings use right hand most right some human beings use left hand the most in that case if this is the theory right then their offspring should have a bigger right hand and smaller left hand but are we having that kind of thing no fine and one more example is that you know very well this blacksmiths the people who work on iron okay who make iron articles so what they do they beat their uh, you know uh, molten iron to bring them into shapes so what should have happened their son or daughter should have a very strong hand but is that the case no clear so that is what is the criticism for lamarckianism lamarck theory cannot account for all the observations made about life on earth for example they couldn't predict that all organism gradually became complex and simple organisms disappear today we do have simple organisms also single celled organisms also we have we have multi cell complex organisms also so this theory was questioned see this lamarck according to lamarck's view originally the giraffe had small necks and then it started stretching you know when like uh, we want to have some we want to get something from the loft so what we do is we try to jump and take it so according to him if you are doing it throughout your lifetime you are keeping something in a very tall height and you are jumping jumping and you are trying to take it you should become taller is that the case no we don't we don't uh, come like that okay why is issue one second
Is my voice clear now? Please let me know if my voice is clear now. So that I can continue. Yes? Clear? My voice clear now? Yes. Good. Let's continue. So should I explain something which from uh, should I explain something you did not understand? Should I start again? Did you understand Lamarckianism? I'm explaining Lamarckism again. Okay. Okay, I'm continuing. So two things, law of use and disuse. First is law of inheritance of acquired characteristics, which means that in life, when we are acquiring some characteristics, should pass on, number one. Number two is that when you are using an organ again and again, that organ becomes stronger and bigger. When you are not using an organ, that is when you are disusing an organ, that becomes disappeared. Okay. These are the two things. Law of inheritance of acquired characteristics, which means that in life, when we are acquiring some characteristics, should pass on, number one. Number two is that okay. when you are using Clear. Fine. Next. So this is the difference between Lamarckism and Darwinism. So what is this? So according to Lamarck, if a organ is used again, it grows and becomes. But according to Darwin, there is a group of uh, uh, there is a group of animals. In that particular group, we will talk about the survival of fittest. Okay. In that particular group, what happens is that which is the fittest, which has the best traits, survives. So, according to Lamarck, it is the acquired characteristics. But according to Darwin, uh, organism with a particular best characteristic survives. Fine. This is the difference between these both. See this. So, according to Lamarck, a giraffe neck stretches. Okay. But according to Darwin, a giraffe which already has a longer neck only can reach the foot. That is nothing but the survival of fetus and it will survive. Okay. Next. The giraffe's necks get longer because it is using it a lot. That is according to Lamarck. But a giraffe which with already a longer neck only can reach it. A giraffe's offspring will inherit longer neck. But one difference between this Lamarck and Darwin is that one question arose. For example, we say that acquired characteristics will pass on to the next generation. So, I will ask you all one question. You all know about tattooing, right? So, acquired, tattooing itself is an acquired character. Like I am going to a tattoo, uh, uh, you know, studio and I am getting a tattoo, some tattoo I am getting. So, if the Lamarck's theory is true, then my baby should have the same tattoo. Yes or no? But is that the case? No. So, that is the one difference. So, one one important difference between one important common thing between both these people is they are saying that the characteristics will get inherited. The first evolutionist who confidently and very publicly stated his idea, everybody are thinking about Darwin, but actually the first evolutionist who confidently and very publicly spoke about this, uh, uh, you know, who spoke about uh, evolution was Lamarck. But unfortunately, the theory process was incorrect. You know, he tried to give some points. But it was not, he had some uh, misunderstanding related to this acquired characteristics. That was one major problem. Lamarck believed that microscopic organism appears spontaneously from an inanimate material. Inanimate means from non-living to living. His belief system is that. Okay, see Lamarckism is very important guys. Every point are important. You should, you should be able to explain with those two theories. What are his backing up? What are the examples I gave you? All these examples you should be mentioning. Clear? Yes. Fine. So, according to him, microorganism appears spontaneously and uh, from inanimate material. Okay. That's not, that's not backed up. He, is, he cannot be able to give some uh, backup also. 
Okay, he believed that evolution was mostly due to the inheritance of acquired characteristics as creatures adapted to the environments. This concept, creatures adapted to the environment was actually right. Okay, so this adaption of creatures to environment plays a very important role. We will be seeing this concept, adaption of a creature, adoption of a living organism to environment in many points. He believed that evolution occurs in an organism uses a body part in such a way like you know for example giraffes evolving through long necks all these things and also he believed that wading birds such as herons and egrets herons and egrets are like egrets you will be seeing in the field now they will be having a body and very thin leg no, very thin leg sometimes they will be standing in single legs or something he believed that their legs are strong because their legs are very long because they stretched them to remain dry see according to his theory their legs became uh, you know longer because they stretched them to remain dry he also believed that creatures could develop new organs or change the structure and function of old ones result of their use or disuse so use of disuse or sometimes they won't ask you lamarck's theory they sometimes might ask you theory of use or disuse as the question explain the theory of use or disuse with the proper examples and uh, uh, represent the criticisms kind of question also can come okay Lamarck did not invent the idea of inheritance of acquired characteristics but stated it clearly and publicly in 1809 that's what I told you starting of 19th century okay is for French scientists it was relatively easy for French scientists George Curvier and other critics of Lamarck to discreet his theory. So, George Curvier was one of the important person who criticized the Lamarck's theory. What was the criticism? I told you already the same thing. If the theory was correct, the children of cowboys, who are cowboys? The one who ride horses. You, would, you could have seen cowboys in the movies. Okay. If what Lamarck is saying is true, then what should have happened is that the the cowboy's son okay so they should have bent legs like when you are you know riding horses we know very well that you know the legs should be if the legs are bent it will be very much comfortable so that is what is first criticism the children of cowboy should have developed bow legs as a result of lifetime of riding horses and would be born with bowed leg as well but that is not the case and then children of professional weightlifters are not born with enlarged muscles that is what is the question like for example, I am following a proper, I am following a particular profession, fine. So profession or I have a particular trait. If that is going to pass, tattooing is one best example. You also can write about tattoos, okay. So these are all the important criticism. So three, what are the things we saw? First we saw about Lamarckism, two things, inheritance of acquired characters, theory of use and disuse. And he also gave example with giraffe, fine. Later, we saw about the criticism now. So, what are the criticisms? If that is the case, if the use or disuse theory is true, the and the theory of acquired uh, inheritance is true, the children of cowboys should have bent legs, and then weightlifters should be born with enlarged muscles. And if even if someone is acquiring tattoo, their children also should have tattoos. But these did not take place. Then the theory of Lamarck theory, Lamarck's theory is not right. Okay. While Lamarck's explanation of evolution was incorrect, it is unfair to label him a bad scientist. Just because of, you know, his theory was not right, you cannot, you know, uh, label him as a bad scientist. Okay? Yes. The traditional Judeo-Christian version of creationism was strongly reinforced by James Usher, a 17th century Anglican archbishop in Northern Ireland. Okay? So, these here you will be having theory of creationism related concept the belief that earth and life are ordered only about 6000 years old fit neatly with the prevalent theory of great chain of being but we know very well that organism is not just existing for 6000 years it is for more than 1 lakh years right yes fine so now we are going to see some person whom we have studied in our uh, schools Fine, Carolus Linnaeus. So, what is this about Carolus Linnaeus? Though Carolus Linnaeus did not 
talk about evolution straight away he did one important thing that is in his 180 books he filled precise description of nature okay he is he is classifying nature okay so he is classifying nature he is classifying organisms this is to be expected since Linnaeus apparently believed that he was just revealing the unchanging order of life created by God. So how does he do it? Is it a plant? No. If it is not a plant, then he is bringing it into animal concept. Then does it have fur? Yes. Maybe it, it can be a cat. Does it have wings? Yes. If it has wings, it can be a bird or a butterfly. If no, it can be any, or, any other organism. This is how he is like creating. If it is a plant, it can be a tree. If it is having a trunk, it is a tree. If not, it is a flower. This kind of, this is how he is analyzing. Okay, how he is analyzing, how he is bringing the ideology, how he is bringing this classification is this way. The goal of documenting in the change in nature would not have made sense to him. Later in his life, he was troubled by the fact that plant hybrids could be created by cross-pollination. Okay, so initially he is not believing in the concept of change. But later he is seeing this cross pollination concepts and hybrid concepts. Am I audible to you all guys? Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Am I audible? Yes. Fine. So Linnaeus had most important contribution lines was his logical classification and his book Systema Naturae first published in 1735. Clear? Next. In this and subsequent works he described plants and animals on the basis of physical appearance and method of reproduction. And then how they are related to each other, what are their degree of similarities, what are their differences, same way he is using binomial nomenclature. We know very well binomial nomenclature, late Latin names, genus and species. Genus will be mentioned with capital, starting with capital letters, species will start with small letter. Okay, that is called as binomial nomenclature. The concept of genus and species was actually developed in late 1600s by John Ray, English naturalist. However, it was Linnaeus who used them to use the name Homo sapiens, which means wise men. What is the meaning of Homo sapiens? The present day man, Homo sapiens, the meaning is wise men. So, who termed that? It was Linnaeus. Clear? He also placed us in the order primates. So, where is this human being lie or Homo sapiens lie in the order primates? Next topic, we will be seeing about primates. So, primates are nothing but which includes apes, monkeys and prosmians. So, initially when Darwin or many people said that man originated from monkey, obviously what happened? Our ancestors should be from monkey. What happened? It became very controversial. Okay. This also, when Linnaeus placed it in the order primates also, it became very controversial at times. Since it, it, it implied that people were part of nature along with other animals and plants. Where is human being? Human beings are always in the animal kingdom only. But initially, it was not accepted by people and they were not ready to accept themselves to be among plants or animals. Because they say that God created human beings specially. But according to classification of Linnaeus, we come under primates. Fine. In addition that we were biologically closer to other primates than to all other animals. Why we were kept in primates was that biologically we were closer to primates. In next class, when we are discussing about, uh, you know, uh, when we are discussing about primates, we will see. Prosmians is one of the primate. Okay, so we'll be seeing it in uh, old world monkeys, new world monkeys, all these concept. Okay, yes. Late in 18th century, a small number of European scientists began to quietly suggest that life forms are fixed. Now they are starting to talk about okay evolution came all these things concept okay so Comte Buffon actually said that living things do change through time and he speculated that this was somehow a result of influences from environment or even chance fine so he was early advocate of Linnaeus classification system he is supporting Linnaeus classification system 
another in 18th century erasmus darwin see this person this person is grandfather of charles darwin so i told you already it is not just charles darwin who was the first person who talk of, who spoke about evolution erasmus darwin who was the grandfather of charles darwin was an english country physician poet and amateur scientist he also believed that evolution has occurred in living things including humans but he only raised fuzzy ideas about it which you know uh, he did not give a clear cut idea about that he wrote in his book laws of you know uh, he wrote in his book uh, about the idea of evolution in poems and a relatively obscure two volume scientific publication called as zoonomia or laws of organic life 1794 to 1796 so erasmus darwin also spoke about evolution only then his grandson charles darwin came okay yes in later work he also suggested that earth and life on it must have been evolving for millions of ages before the commencement of history of mankind do you understand so according to religion 6000 years ago only the life form started some people also say that only 2000 years but what erasmus darwin is saying is that million of ages before the commencement of history of human beings itself origin of life have started okay now theory of catastrophism what is this catastrophism curvier advocated who the, who was the person who advocated catastrophe what is catastrophe catastrophe is a sudden destruction sudden mass destruction is what we call as a catastrophe so according to him, what is this theory of catastrophe is that even today uh, you know uh, many scientists also saying this that there have been violent and sudden natural catastrophes such as great floods and even though we talk about dinosaurs how dinosaurs became extinct how uh, dinosaurs became extinct is that suddenly you know meteor fall took place and the world everything every organism got destroyed and again new organism started generating that is what is something like catastrophism okay great floods rapid formation of major mountain chains plants and animals living in those world where such events occurred were often killed according to curvier and the new organism started generating okay see uh, sociology i am not taking class there are you know videos of sociology also in the same channel which is free you can go and refer to them okay myself i will be taking the uh, anthropology class okay despite his criticism of lamarck curvier did not reject the idea that there had been earlier life forms in fact he was the first scientist to document extinction of ancient animals especially expert on dinosaurs okay he rejected the idea that their existence implied the evolution had occurred dogmatically or the fixity of species a careful examination of european geological deposit in early 19th century led the english lawyer and geologist charles lyell to conclude that curvier's catastrophism theory was wrong so now we are talking about catastrophism according to curvier he is saying that in period of time catastrophes like great floods or sudden formation of mountains something took place that the plants and animals living in that places got killed uh, frequently and the new organism generated but according to charles lyell uh, he is the one who is like you know seeing the european geological deposits and he is criticizing that the curvier's catastrophism theory was wrong he believed that primarily it have been slower progressive changes it is not because of catastrophe alone the changes have been very slow and progressive okay so in his three volume principles of geology lyell documented the fact that earth must be very old and it has subject to the some sort of natural process see when you talk about evolution we just don't talk in the terms of biology evolution we talk in terms of geology and we also talk in terms of nature also clear so that is the important concepts these forces what are these forces which shaped the land which we have already studied in geography also like erosion earthquakes glacial movements volcanoes see in terms of geomorphology we will be studying the land forms created by these changes even the decomposition of plants and animals the composition of plants and animals only gives us fossil fuels right erosion earthquakes glacial movements volcanoes even the decomposition fine next 
uniformitarianism so lyell proved conclusive conclusive theory for uniformitarianism so what curvier is saying catastrophism what is uniformitarianism he is saying that everything changed uniformly okay which is also actually not only really have occurred in past it was all uniform it did not have much change okay the revolutionary idea was instrumental leading charles darwin now we are coming to the most important part about darwinism okay understanding the biological evolution in 1830s fine okay let's see what happened about this catastrophism uniformitarianism all these things today we know that our planet has been shaped by occasional catastrophic events such as bombardment of large meteors then comparatively slower natural process like uniformitarianism both happen we cannot say one theory only occurred the other theory did not occur catastrophism also occurred sometimes meteor uh, fall took place you know ice age sudden melting of ice took place formation of uh, landforms took place uniformitarianism is also true you know slow and steady changes like glacial movements soil erosion or deposits everything also occurred all these events have potentially affected the rate and direction of biological evolution the biological evolution depended on the geomorphological changes that is what is important here now coming to this origin of species so how this started how darwinism started so what happened is that charles darwin he is taking his uh, uh, ship beagle okay so the ship is called as beagle and what he is doing he is going to this galapagos islands so there he is noting the finches finches is a type of bird this finches is not just available in that island finches is spread in many parts of world but in that particular island the beaks were all highly adapted to a different lifestyle you know according to whatever food is available in that particular island the beak have started changing okay finches is available in many parts of world but still in that particular island the finches had changes the beak had changed according to whatever food they had okay so what happened he hypothesized that there must be some process that lead to this diversity and adaptation so he is trying to bring in a different uh, you know theory about all these changes after returning from voyage and at the urging of friends darwin is putting his thought in writing 490 pages abstract and that is the title called as origin of species very famous book which published in 1859 now do you understand how this origin of species actually originated he is going to a voyage to galapago islands there he is going in his ship uh, beagle there he is noting down particularly a bird called as finches so this finches is having a different beak adaptation based on the lifestyle it had over there okay so the public reception of origin was phenomenal within 15 years it was well accepted evolution did occur the way darwin said slowly and in small steps so now evolution everybody is accepting that evolution occurred in slowly and in small steps however the mechanism of natural selection remained difficult okay this term natural selection remained very difficult so we'll see what is this for example he knew that knew that traits were passed down from parents to offspring but he did not know how this happened okay he's saying that okay some trait is there that trait is only making that organism survive and he is also understanding that the trait is passing from mother and father or generally parents to the offspring but he did not know how it passed he did, he couldn't answer that okay yes so here he is bringing an intense study of natural selection which which got more scrutiny and deeper scientific support what is the survival of fittest even till today the survival of fittest concept has been you know spoken very famously among people okay like in uh, in a casual conversation also when we find someone uh, doing something we say okay survival of fittest so someone should survive one if someone can survive only if he is fitting in that particular situation if he or she is fitting in that particular situation according to uh, darwin let's see what is this with discovery of genetics darwin's theory gained a scientific basis and he is talking about this survival of fittest what is this so analysis of darwin's evolution survival of fittest means that 
an organism which is having a particular trait which makes it more survival only can um, uh, only can you know pass on its generation the other organism could not fit could do not have the traits to fit in that particular situation will fail and eventually disappear okay that is what is the survival of fittest so analysis of darwin's evolution since the publication in 1859 the origin of species has been closely studied by generation of eight biologists many scientists have categorized and argumented darwin's theories standing tall among this ernst meyer okay he is dividing darwin's theory into five unique parts very important ernst meyer's classification of or division of darwin's theory so he is saying evolution as such is the first point what is this as we see in the section of lamarck the very idea that evolution occur was much debated what is that along with buffon and lamarck darwin supported the ability of species to change time first and foremost thing is darwin is saying that species changes that is evolution as such species will change according to time that is the first thing darwin is saying the mechanism by which he believed happened was different from lamarck or anyone else first of all he is accepting that there is change but how it is changing is different common descent what is it common descent common descent means all the diversity of earth emerged from one or few common ancestors so we all had had a common ancestor and only from them everybody evolved so there was organism one which evolved into two and three then you know it it is like moving but we had a common ancestor that is called as common descent that is the first thing you should have in mind next is gradualism as he is saying it took place gradually it did not you know take place suddenly so while lamarck felt that species wide change to could take place in the span of few generation darwin felt that evolution was much slower process the one major difference between lamarck and darwin was according to lamarckism when you start using an organ again and again it gets evolved but for darwinism it is not the case okay he is saying that the evolution took place very gradually in a very slow manner and it took place in innumerable small steps very small changes occur it is not like suddenly giraffe was very tall in two generations or three generation it took many generation that the giraffes which were a bit taller survived better so when their gene passed on the next generation was somewhat taller you know this happened in a very gradual manner in a innumerable many small steps steps based on this the idea of scottish geologist sir charles lyell he estimated that the world is much older than contemporary geological theory accounts for population speciation this portion of darwin theory states that within a population change in a species occur as the balance of hereditary characteristics shifts across the population that is there is a population okay let's take a population of birds so what he is saying is that these birds are feeding on fruits suddenly there is a scarcity of fruits they had to feed on nuts dry nuts so the bird feeding on fruit will have a weaker beak compared to a bird feeding on nuts so according to darwin what happened in these birds some birds you know very few if there are 100 birds initially 10 birds started having hard beaks so these people the other 90 people did not get proper food and they died but these 10 beaks fed on nuts and they survived and they generated and they started created a next generation so this generation became a separate species that is called as population speciation so already there is a population inside that population there is some change occurring that species that changed population becomes a separate species that is becoming an individual species this is what is about darwinism but according to lamarck all giraffes would develop long necks but darwin is saying it is not everybody will create a specific characteristics that makes them survive only ones who create a characteristics are surviving it is not that you are creating the uh, you are creating a particular trait to survive the only one who is already having the trait can survive 
for example it's not like you come to the examination and you get the pen you only if you have the pen you can write the examination that is the different dif difference between these two next comes the natural selection which is the most unique part of darwin's theory what is it competition also called the struggle for life has been thought as the reason that a given species might succeed or go extinct do you understand competition or struggle for life is the most important concept which decides that species will exist or exit the life okay so that is what is important concept this when giraffe is born with a longer neck then its fellows it will survive for example there is a tree at height there is a tree at this height fine so there are giraffe 1 giraffe 2 so according to lamarck when you are trying to get food you will develop a longer neck so that you will feed on this but this is lamarckism but according to darwin giraffe 1 is there giraffe 2 is there giraffe 1 is having long neck giraffe 2 is having short neck giraffe 1 will succeed giraffe 2 will die this is what is darwinism that is what we call it as survival of fittest this how it is happening is na nature selection natural selection okay nature selected nature selected that particular trait to be fittest and they become successful the other ones become disappeared clear see when a giraffe is born with a longer neck than its fellows it gains advantage because it's able to reach more food the long neck giraffe is therefore stronger lives longer and more likely to have offspring so food is very important the food see any organism if you take they have special adaptations for two things one is to acquire food second one is to reproduce so reproduction is seen as you know many scientists initially when they proposed a theory that reproduction was the major aim of any organism in life you know even art science you know all these poetry everything was actually created for sexual attraction that was the theory initially proposed by a scientist but it was seen as a very big mistake but later we understood yes reproduction is one of the major concept in every organism the organism which can reproduce is said to be the successful organism for reproduction you need food for food in giraffe you need a longer neck if you don't have longer neck you won't get food if you don't get food you will eventually die and you cannot undergo reproduction so the organism with a longer neck is fit so this organism can survive that is what we call the survival of fittest and this organism can only create offspring so eventually when the long neck organism creates an offspring that offspring also can have a long neck because it is in their gene clear yes these offsprings are born with same long neck as their parent though some might have even longer necks the cycle continues now what happens there is an organism it is generating offsprings three offsprings so in this this is having a long neck this is having even longer neck this is having short neck so this organism will survive this organism will survive even more better this organism will die so when they start breeding what happen it will start increasing the size so when they reach the optimum size what happens that particular species survive and this cycle starts continuing okay the theory of natural selection depends on five postulates very important what are those first individuals are variable here every individual is a different unit here some variations are passed down not all variation what lamarck said inheritance of acquired character but according to darwin some variations are passed down which variation is passing down is only uh, deciding whether they can survive or not most offsprings more offsprings are produced than can survive see this very important concept only two offsprings can actually survive but actually the organism will produce four what is the survival rate more offsprings are only created than what can survive and survival and reproduction are not random they have reasons behind them survival and reproduction have reasons behind them many examples mating dance in birds and even there is a fish you know which creates a beautiful pattern under sea that we can see even in human beings now in human beings for marriage we have many uh, you know conditions some prefer appearance some prefer financial uh, 
you know financial independence some prefer you know tall person thin person so these are all conditions so survival or reproduction is not random. everybody can survive everybody can reproduce no in nature there are many conditions for survival and reproduction who is fitting in these condition only can survive only can reproduce that is what is they are saying and the history of earth is long it's not just 6000 year the history of earth is very long okay what is natural selection darwin's theory about natural selection is that there is heritable variation in a population more individuals are born in a population than they can survive individuals that do survive and reproduce are not a random subset of population they are selected based on their particular trait okay that is they are possessing a particular trait that somehow make them better at surviving and reproducing in a particular environment so what trait they have which made them survive is passed on to the offspring such that their generations are surviving in the nature that is what is natural selection there is a couple of additional point what is that natural selection can only act on existing heritable variation if there is no variation for a particular trait then selection simply cannot do anything that is there is a variation it is not passed on it is stopping there itself offsprings are not having this variation do you think offsprings can survive no the heritable variation only will decide whether they can survive or not the non heritable variation cannot decide that this is why generation of variation is in the context of mutation and genetic recombination is so central to our understanding of evolution that is why you can understand evolution only through mutation and genetic recombination without these two concept understanding of evolution is not at all possible okay another important point to natural selection acts on individual is its evolutionary consequences individuals do not evolve evolution is measured as a change in average characteristics of population it's not about individuals it's about a population fine next what are the examples of natural selections examples of artificial selection the breeding of domesticated plants and animals you know uh, darwin's times natural selection have been demonstrated to occur in many cases like you know examples in wide population see this is very important the peppered moths what is this peppered moth i will tell you see what happened in england uh, this is one interesting story there is a species called as peppered moths so even now you can see it in their uh, museum they have this collection of moths so what happened about this pepper moths was before 1800s if you see before see this before the first century of uh, you know uh, uh, 1900 before this uh, popul 1850s what happened was the moths was light colored okay they were not brightly colored they were light colored but later in 1900s if you see in the same museum in 1900s the moths were dark colored okay so light colored are they dark colored so before 1900s early in 1850s all they were all light colored later in 1900 they were dark colored what is the reason behind them why they changed was due to industrial revolution so what happened during industrial revolution due to the exhaust from different uh, you know due to exhaust from different uh, factories there was a change pollution that took place during that time what happened these moths moths usually we know very well they move around during night time in day time what they did they rested on tree trunks so in these tree trunks what happened there were this uh, you know uh, um there were this mosses okay the growth algal growth on this uh, tree trunks okay see so settle on the light covered lichens light colored lichens so these lichens were light in colored so before 1850s they were light in colored so when these moths were uh, resting on this lens they had this camouflage they were not able to see so predators found them tough to get hunted okay but after pollution what happened these lichens became dark so on a dark colored surface when a light colored animal is resting it will be contrast and it is easily visible for the predators so 
So what happened in meantime? The moths with dark colored only survived since they were on this dark lichen. The other light colored moths were eaten by the predators. So next to generations, what happened? Only dark colored moths started moths started generating. Do you understand what is the story? So initially before 1850s, these peppered moths in England were lightly colored. Why they were lightly colored? They were resting on the tree trunks. So that trunks had light colored lichens. So lichens are lichens. It's a symbiotic relationship between algae and tree. So this what happened was that after this industrial revolution due to pollution, these lichens started having a dark color. So these moths when they rested on dark colored lichens were an easy prey for the predators. But certain moths which had light dark color due to mutations survived. So these moths, the survived moths who were dark in color only could reproduce and when they reproduced they had dark colored moths. Now do you understand? So even today in the museum, uh, even today in those museums they have these changes. Before 1900s, if you see they were all light in colored. But after 1900s, nearly 98 percentage of the populations were uniformly dark colored. This is what is Darwin is also saying about survival of fetus or natural selection. Okay, so there is one particular trait that changed. The change can be of any reason. It can be based on mutation, or it can be based on any genetic recombination, or it can be based on any reason. That is what he is saying. Natural selection. Any reason it can be. But that change is what is making that particular organism survive and that is what we call it as survival of fetus. Clear? This is one example which you can write it for, you know, backing up Darwin's theory. And along with that, other things also supported Darwin, uh, which is nothing but this fossils. Okay? So, this moth experiment, we call it as Kettlewell's experiment. This, this Kettlewell's experiment was consistent with the idea of natural selection caused by the visual predators hunting these animals. That is why many organisms are camouflaged based on their outer surface. If you are going to, you know, some organism even change color for seasons. You know, some foxes are brown in color during summer and spring. They change to white in color during winter. Okay, this is all, you know, survival of fittest related concept only. Okay. In this way, the dark coloration spread the population. Types of natural selection. So now we will see what are the types of natural selection. Fine. So we will also see some graph. This graph you can also use. Yes, yes, definitely I will, uh, I will share the uh, PDFs. Don't worry. Okay, I will share the PDFs. So we will see what are those. So this is the, uh, this is the graph that is there is a population and this is the quantification of trait. Let's, let's take height height as one trait. So this is like less, less height or short, short, medium, tall. This is the height, this is the original population. Okay. First is stabilizing selection. What is stabilizing selection? So stabilizing selection is that when selective pressure selects against two extreme traits. So two, ex this natural selection is selecting two extreme traits. But later what happens is that these two extreme traits when they contradict with each other, they choose the medium height as the important concept and the population of medium height only will increase for stabilizing the traits. That is what is given here. See there is two selections, there are two selections that is taking place. So there are two traits have been selected. Again, I'm telling you tall, sorry. So this is short plants. This is tall plants. This is medium. Okay. So in stabilizing selection, what happens is that two extremes are there. But to stabilize the population, the middle, middle is getting selected. The selection against both extremes. This is the original population. This is the population after selection. This is called as stabilizing selection. Next is directional selection. Directional selection is one particular uh, trait is, see here, one population particular trait is 
selected that is called as stabilizing selection okay yes we'll see an example see here so i told you this is the original population you have short you have medium and you have tall so directional selection means the selection will go to one particular direction it can be tall or short anything based on that particular situation okay so if it is if the selection is moving towards a particular direction we call it as directional selection if it is stabilizing and choosing the middle path we call it as stabilized selection disruptive selection means the selection process acts against the individual in the middle of the trait distribution see here disruptive selection is that there is a middle path just opposite to stabilizing selection they choose the extremes and they reject the middle path that is called as disruptive selection so first we saw stabilizing selection and then we saw directional selection now we saw disruptive selection based on this map you can understand very well in stabilizing middle path is chosen middle the the bit in between uh, trait is chosen in directional single direction single trait is chosen in disruptive the middle is uh, rejected and the two extremes are chosen fine selective breeding natural selection and selective breeding can produce changes in animals and plants one difference between the natural selection and selective breeding is that natural selection takes place in the environment i mean the nature selective breeding is what we do for example farmers breed animals with high milk uh, giving capacity one more thing i'll give you a very best example dogs pet industry in dogs what people do they cross breed animals with you know with uh, uh, very uh, likable personalities for example tea cup puppies and then husky plus german shepherd german shepherd they call it as you know uh, some different names labrador pl uh, labrador plus golden retriever labrador retriever so what have what is the difference between selective breeding and natural selection in natural selection in nature particular trait is selected and only they can reproduce and that trait is passing on from generation to generation selective breeding is something which we human beings are doing we human beings intervene and we select that particular trait and cross breed them or interbreed them to get that particular characteristics that is the difference between natural selection and selective breeding very important concept do you all understand this so natural selection which occurs in nature where a particular trait is selected by nature or which which is which is making that particular organism survive so what happens the other organism which is not having that particular trait disappears in time the organism which is having that particular trait which makes them fit survives and passes on to the other generations in selective breeding the human beings decide a particular trait they desire for it can be for any reason economical reason or aesthetic purpose anything it can be they breed those organism and bring in variations clear selective breeding is a process when we choose the characteristics we want in animal we breed together male and female that show some of these characteristics from offsprings we produce we select those that show the characteristics the most and breed them together for example i want a dog i want a dog to be very tall ferocious but i want to be in white in color so what i am doing i am crossing between two dogs maybe husky and german shepherd so when i am crossing this i get offsprings do you think all the offsprings will have the desired character no among three offsprings only one is having the desired character what i am doing again i am breeding it with the other animal which have which is having the desired character i have so this keeps on going till i attain the desired character that is called as selective breed this process is repeated over many generation each time selecting and breeding together those animals have characteristics we are looking for okay they are all bred from common ancestors all these dogs were selectively bred from a common ancestors farmers have used selective breeding for centuries to increase the milk yield in the cattle produce larger eggs from chicken and obtain more grain from wheat this has been taking place for many long time so this kind of selection takes place in nature also and by man also so in nature we call it as natural selection 
by man we call it as selective breeding that's the main important concept clear next see this this is how you know these are all animals which have one which once had various characteristics now they have different characteristics based on the selective breeding concept okay next coming to mutations cause and effect mutations are changes that can occur in genes what is a mutation mutation is a change that can occur in genes these changes are random and can be caused by background radiation chemicals there are many reasons okay for example chemicals in cigarette smoke how do we how do we say that uh, smoking creates cancer every time when you watch movie smoking creates cancer we see that how because the chemicals in the cigarette are creating the mutations in the gene what is cancer first of all cancer is every cell divides cell one single cell divides into two two into four so it keeps on moving okay that is how it works so what is this mutation is that what is cancer is that a cell instead of dividing into four it is dividing into four then 16 it's like dividing unwantedly and it is not stopping that is what is called as mutation okay yes sometimes these changes can be so severe that cell dies cell can divide uncontrollably and become cancerous sometimes these changes are small and cell survives when these are small and cell survives this is again passed on to other generation okay sometimes they are beneficial to us and produce new and useful characteristics clear passing on mutations these changes occur in normal body cells these changes are lost when we die but if changes occur in our sex cells what is the sex cells the cells which see this year in upsc preliminary examination there were two questions which had this concept that is change genetic change can be done in the sex cells sex cells means the cells which are creating sperm and ovum that is possible see this if changes occur in cells such as sperm and ova there is a possibility that that gene is passed on to the next generation generally in human body when the change occurs in a particular cell the man uh, dies and then the mutation disappears in his life itself but the change is occurring in the sex cells then what happens is that it will get passed on to the next generation obviously that is the passing on mutation it is when these changes are passed on to the next generation the natural selection can either ensure they are useful or not so now there is a change for example there is an animal so that animal is having a change in let's take color skin color okay there is a change in its fur color let's take fur color there is a mutation and that particular organism is becoming white in color now it is passing on to the next generation also but if that organism is living in a area where ice is filled that organism will survive but if it is living in some other area where the white color is contrast to the dark background it dies so the mutation occurs but natural selection only decides whether the mutation is beneficial or not so in in natural selection if the mutation is selected if it is uh, good then what happens it passes on it passes on to generation and there is a possibility that might become a new species itself but if it is you know in contrast if it is not selected by nature maybe it will disappear due to the opposite to survival of fittest concept okay yes so what we are going to do is we are going to stop this uh, session here next class we will have the second part of the session where we will be discussing even more in detail about you know uh, various rule and we will also see about different modes of evolution concepts like parallelism convergence divergence adaptive radiation all these concepts clear so any doubts in whatever we discussed till today yes please you can ask me if you have any doubt
we will have uh, classes on the alternative days as i told you already alternative days we will have class mostly i will inform you in the telegram channel link okay yes any other doubts in today's session i will share you the pdf don't worry when the class is over you know when this uh, topic is over in the next class i will totally share you this pdf okay yes okay so to cover paper 1 it will go very fast actually we have covered already uh, three topics in paper 1 this is the fourth topic we will cover this also maybe it will take um, one more month one one, one and a half month at the maximum to finish paper 1 Yes. Fine. So, if any doubts, you can ask me. Feel free to ask me in the Telegram channel also. Okay. And do do practice daily. Don't forget the concepts. We'll meet, you know, regularly hereafter. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll meet again uh, in the next session. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.